In this module, we're going to use z-scores once again. Um, last time, we used z-scores to find percentiles given a raw score. So if you had a raw score, you'd first convert it to a z-score and then use the z and the table of the normal distribution to find the percentile. This time, we want to go from a desired percentile to a z-score and then to a raw score. For example, if we had a sample of data with a mean of 30 and a standard deviation of 7.92, and we um, thought it was reasonable to assume that that sample came from a normally distributed population, we might want to know what raw score would correspond to the 70th percentile. So we need to start with that percentile, then we're going to convert to a z-score, and then we're going to use the z-score to go to the table of the normal distribution um, and, or excuse me, um, use the z-score to compute a raw score from that. So, if we are given the 70th percentile, I always find it helpful to draw these in. What I need to do is draw on the normal distribution approximately where that 70th percentile would be. Um, I know it's going to be higher than the mean because the mean divides it right at the 50th percentile. I also know that if we were to go up one standard deviation, we would include all the way up to the 84th percentile because this um, area from the mean to one standard deviation is 0.3413, uh, I think it is, basically 34%. So it's going to be something short of that, like maybe right about here. Something a little bit less than one standard deviation above the mean. But we know that wherever that point is, if it really is the 70th percentile, we're going to have 70% of all the scores lower than that point. 70% means 20% here, and then the remaining 50% from the mean down. What we need to do is find out just what is that z-score that corresponds to an area of 0.20. So that's where we have to go to the table of the normal distribution. If we go to column 5, we're going to be able to read off what the area is from the mean out to that z-score. So the z-score will be found by looking at 0 0.20 in column 5. And we don't have it exactly, but it looks like the closest is 0.1985 and the z-score that corresponds to that is 0.52. So z equals 0.52. Knowing that, we can then use the z-score formula to solve this time for the raw score. You see, we now know the z-score. We also know that the mean is 30. We know the standard deviation is 7.92. So we can just algebraically manipulate this formula so that we are solving for x, and then substitute in our z-score, our mean of 30, our standard deviation of 7.92, um, and we'll get the raw score out. So let's solve this one first. Um, if we multiply both sides by s, we get rid of the denominator over here. And since we want to isolate x on one side, if we were to add the mean to both sides, we accomplish that isolation. Now I'm just going to reverse uh, left to right because we're solving for x. So x equals z times the standard deviation plus the mean. So, doing that up here, we're going to multiply our z value of 0.52 times the standard deviation, 7.92, add the mean, which is 30, and we get 
4.52 times 7.92, that's 4.12. What that tells us is that a raw score of 34.12 corresponds to the 70th percentile. Once again, here's what we did. I drew the normal distribution first. I located approximately where that 70th percentile should be, just to have something to look at. Um, but wherever that is, we know that it's going to have 20% of all the scores between the mean and that point and then the other 50% make up the 70th of uh, the 70%. Um, if I know this is 20%, I can go to column three, excuse me, column five, look up the z-score, and then I can use that z-score to transform um, our number back to a raw score. Let's do one more quickly, one that's below the mean, just to give you the other side of the story here. Meaning that up a little bit. What if we were interested in the 30th percentile? Thirtieth percentile. Thirtieth percentile would be not quite one standard deviation below the mean. Even if you didn't know that, this diagram would help you, because what you do know is that the area below that point is 0.3. That's the definition of the 30th percentile. That proportion of scores has to be below our number. And what we want to know is <clears throat> what is the z-score that corresponds to that? And that is, how far below the mean do we have to go in order to have 30% of all the scores left and 20% on this side? You know, I realize I've just given you almost exactly the same problem as, it, as before. If this is 0 0.200 um, and this is 0 0.300, we've already looked that up. In column 5, we looked it up to find that the z-score was 0.52. But we should also be able to look up 0 .300 and find the same z-score. And I'm just going to verify that and make sure I didn't make any kind of mistakes. So in column 3, looking up 0 .300, um, it is in fact very close to 0 .300, 0 .3015, and that gives us a z-score of 0.52. Now, solving our formula, we're going to take z times the standard deviation and add the mean. That's going to be 0.52. Ah, by the way, almost neglected the sign here. That is a negative sign since it's below the mean. So the z is a negative 0.52 times the standard deviation 7.92 plus the mean of 30. So, once again, 0.52 times 7.92, that's going to be a negative 4.12. And that should be 25.88. I better check that. Let's make sure I really subtract it right. 30 minus... 4.12 equals 25.88. So, we wanted to know what raw score corresponded to the 30th percentile. It turns out that a score of 25.88 does.